gonna move on to topic number three. Baltimore Ravens uh, dealt a huge blow last week, or over the weekend rather, when uh, J.K. Dobbins, their starting running back, one of their top draft picks last year, and had a good rookie season, tore his ACL in their final preseason game. Brandon, uh, how does this affect the Baltimore Ravens heading into the season? I mean, a big hit. This is a big hit for the team. I mean, Dobbins is a really good back that was really just defining himself in the NFL, man. I think he was really just starting to break out. You're really just starting to see the best of J.K. Dobbins over this last year. And I think a lot of people were really looking forward to what he could be doing this year for the Ravens and their strong run game. Honestly, they have the best run game in the NFL statistically. And so it's just really one of those things where when you got him and Lamar Jackson, there's so many capabilities I just came off saying it in the last segment that when you have a mobile quarterback, it gives you so many options and so many different play calls that you can go with. But hey, when you have a tandem of a great running back, you have an amazing backfield. And guess what? Linebackers do not know what's going to happen. They don't know if they have to read the quarterback, the running back, the fullback. Is it going to be a pass? Is it going to be a screen? Is it going to be a toss play? So it just puts the defense in a position where they really don't know what's going on. And as a, as a coach, you always want to keep the defense on their toes and off balance. And I think, you know, that's exactly what the Ravens have been doing over the last season with their run game between their quarterback and their run running back. So this is undeniably a big hit to this Ravens team and to their run game. So I really want to see what they're going to be doing going forward to shore it up because this is clearly a big injury where he's out for the whole season. So you have to think about what you're going to do with your roster. Are you going to just bump up somebody from maybe your practice squad? Or are you going to go out and get somebody on the free agent? Or are you going to go out and make a trade at this point? Um, so there's still a lot of options that the Ravens have. And, and we're going to see what they do going forward. And, hey, they might just trust the next guy up. And we all know in, in football that is really one of the main you know thoughts is trust the next guy up and have that next guy ready for his opportunity. And John, John Harbaugh is a great coach, and I have undeniably no doubt that he'll have the plan ready to go. But I'll tell you what, this week he's been taking a lot of heat for playing Dobbins so much in that game. And people are asking him questions, being like, did you even need to play him in that game? But Harbaugh has been coming back saying that was always part of the plan was to get him so many reps in the preseason, including in that game where he got hurt. And we've all just got to remember this is a full contact sport. It's a warrior sport. It's probably the most violent sport there is besides boxing or MMA. So, I mean, injuries happen. This is part of the game. Unfortunately for J.K. Dobbins, he's going to have to come back and rehab this injury. But I do think this is a big hit for the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I do too. I mean, the, the Ravens have always seemed to be able to run the ball. Um, they just kind of had that kind of team. I think when you play in the AFC North, you have to be able to run the ball with against Pittsburgh and Cleveland and and uh, any other team that, that comes through there. But um, – yeah, th this is this is rough for the for the Ravens. Uh, they do have Gus Edwards, who I believe is going to get the bulk of the carries now that Dobbins is out for the year. Good player. Um, I don't know if he's. You know, I don't think he's at the level that J.K. Dobbins is. And like you mentioned, it seemed like J.K. Dobbins was really kind of setting himself up to become one of the elite running backs in the NFL. He was obviously really good in college. Um, that's why he got drafted so high. Looks good last year. He's part of that tandem with Mark Ingram. They had Ingram, they had Dobbins, and then they had uh, Lamar Jackson. And you had three guys in the backfield who you really had to worry about. And then on top of that, you had a couple of tight ends that were good that could go out and, and, and catch footballs. And you kind of didn't know, you know, whatever base personnel they were coming out of. They could run a lot of different stuff, whether it was run, pass, and they had a lot of different options out of that base personnel with the two tight end set. So I, I, think, I don't think they'll go away from that this year, but I – you just wonder how they're going to use their running backs and maybe, you know, some of their receivers will get involved even more um, this upcoming season. You know, they, they've been kind of waiting for Marquise Brown to be a guy that really explodes. I just don't think their passing attack has so far allowed him to do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're certainly going to miss Dobbins. They go through a lot of running backs. They always have. So when you lose a, a really good one, that's certainly going to hurt you. I still think the Ravens are going to be very good. Um, they're certainly going to still be able to run the ball. Maybe Lamar Jackson uh, runs the ball even more. And then that's maybe a question you ask. You know, if you run it more with Jackson, is he then more susceptible to injury because he's a quarterback and he's running the football more? Is that a consequence of not having <clears throat> Dobbins? So, you know, I'm sure they'll add another back throughout the season. Uh, players are getting cut right now and released and then sign the practice squads and things. And then injuries happen throughout the year. So then guys get moved around. Um, so, you know, I think they'll probably pick up somebody else, too, to go along with Gus Edwards and whoever else they have on that team. 
uh, but definitely a big loss for the Ravens. Yeah, I think undeniably a big hit for this Ravens team. And, and like you said, they bring up that base set of two tight ends. And, and Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson have, have got a great relationship right now with passing the ball. So just really one of those things where I think when Lamar looks his way, it's a guarantee. But I, I think that does help, like you said, with even running the ball and keeping the defense off balance, right? Be knowing that we've got a great run game, but we've got these tight ends you got to watch out for. So I do wonder what they're going to do to basically replace that. I, I say you cannot run Lamar Jackson more. I repeat that. You cannot run Lamar Jackson more because, like you said, you do not want to take an injury long term with your franchise quarterback of the of the next like 10 years, hopefully. Right. So you want to be able to look to protect this guy. You want to just run him about the same that you did last year. So you've got to look to get some production from another player here. And you brought him up, honestly. And, and you know, I'm an offensive coach. I'm an offensive minded coach. And. If I'm the Ravens, you know, offensive coordinator, I'm thinking, you know what? I can't get the ball to Marquise Brown down the field. Well, maybe I need to line him up in the backfield or maybe I need to line him up at age back or maybe I need to throw some more screens to him or even, you know, run, you know, a couple of, you know, you know, sprint draw passes out or or something to get this guy the ball. But line him up in the backfield if you need to. And maybe you can get some replacement out of him, too. We've all we've seen it in the past with wide receivers going into the backfield and taking carries as well. And with a guy that's the dynamic like Marquise Brown, I think that would be a great plan. Folks, if you like this show, you're watching it right now on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. That's Comeback Sports on YouTube. Subcri subscribe to the channel, Comeback Sports. And then all the cut-ups that our awesome producer, Ben Kudo, puts together after the show, that'll all filter to your YouTube channel. You don't have to go search for it, it's just right there in your subscriptions. 